So now we're heading to China to meet Shan, who some of you may remember from our first ever show and tell. And I'm excited to announce that Shan has some epic updates to the Pose animator work she shared with us before. It's really great to see how an earlier prototype from the community goes on to mature into its own product. So Shan, over to you, tell us more. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Shan. I'm currently a creative technologist working at uh, Google Partner Innovation Team. I'm based in Shanghai. So a couple of months ago, we open sourced this project called Pose Animator that allow you to use your body to animate uh, your SVG characters. So people seem to like it, uh, but we're thinking about um, how we might uh, make it even better by making it easier for everyone to create uh, animations. Uh, because SVG, as it is, uh, still requires quite a bit of design expertise to create but uh, we want to lower the bar even further so that uh, anyone can uh, create a character and animate them. So that's amazing. So I guess now for the super fun part, can we get a demo? Yeah, absolutely. So um, here we have Scribbly. Uh, it's very similar to Post Animator. Uh, you can see um, the camera feed and in the bottom, we provide a carousel of characters for you to choose from. Um, so you can switch between a couple of presets. <laughs> um, <laughs> our UX designer uh, really loved this fun and playful design language. So that is an amazing some... character. 10 out of 10 for um, creative drawing right there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So there are a couple of um, characters like this. And we also have a couple of AR characters. So by AR, we mean that uh, we're simply showing the background camera feed like this. <laughs> That's cool. So. Uh, you can switch between a few um, presets like this. <laughs> I love how you can <laughs> see how it's actually following the body here and, and you know, in real time adapting to whatever it is that you're doing. That's super nice. If you want to uh, create your own character, uh, you can do so by clicking, clicking on this plus button. So we'll have a few body shape presets for you to choose from. Uh, so you can use those or draw uh, one of your own. So I can do something like this, for example. Uh, uh, this takes you to the Doodle editor where you can actually doodle. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can select your favorite color, change the stroke width. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to start doodling away. I apologize for my doodle skill. <laughs> <laughs> now we get to see your, your creative doodling skill. <laughs> uh, spoiler alert, it's not very good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but I will uh, try to draw a cat here. Very nice. Um, yeah. Give it. I mean, we are on YouTube, so, so. cats are the uh, animal of choice. So good job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, that's uh, stra uh, strategically planned. <laughs> All right, here is a cat. So uh, maybe I should give it a different color. All right. So whiskers of different color. Beautiful. Here we go. <laughs> um, once I hit done, <laughs> it will just kind of animate to my face. So like, um, you can decide to turn the background off like this and, um, um, it will just show the, the plain background or you can do it, um, in AR mode, um, which is quite fun and actually introduces, um, a little different use case because it, it really feels more like a full body, uh, AR filter instead of you know like yeah maybe you can the... show us the full body mode as well and just yeah see it in action <laughs> super cool again I, I apologize for my dancing skill <laughs> as well <laughs> um yeah but uh, if you want to draw a little ar filter for yourself you can really get quick uh, quite creative with this uh, one thing I like to do when I uh, create a filter is try to draw around my face instead of over my face. So like, maybe let me um, create a new uh, design from scratch. So uh, this thing will be for AR. So uh, I will just draw something in white. Uh, give me, give myself a little, I don't know, um, maybe a little hat <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just do the hat this time. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, and uh, it, it will just animate, and you can go back in, draw more, adjust however you want. And uh, once you're happy with your uh, design, you can do record. So um, you can record something up to 15 seconds um, in Scribbly. So I'll just do a little wiggle here. <laughs> and uh, once you're happy with the recording, um, we have a little trimmer for you to uh, decide when uh, to start and when to end. And once you're, you can play it back to preview it as well. And once you're happy with the result, uh, you can click Save, and we have a couple of export options. So that you can either save it as a GIF. Which, of course, is very much required for social media these days. We love our, our GIFs on there, so <laughs> good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so um, all the encoding for the GIF is happening in the browser, so nothing is leaving your machine. Amazing. Uh, this is pretty good. Yeah. So one more question I have on this is that, uh, is this still using the PoseNet and face mesh models only? Uh, there's a few new users watching this this time from the TensorFlow channel, so they may not have seen this before, or have you added any extra ones? Uh, you're exactly right that uh, it's still using face mesh and PoseNet. So you know, like the, the same thing um, to detect the key points from your face and uh, your full body. Uh, the only catch this time is uh, we had to uh, examine more closely the configuration we're running these two models with, uh, just because we want to be able to support a good user experience on mobile and desktop as well. And the computing power on mobile and desktop is quite different. So we have to kind of use a more mobile friendly, uh, lower quality model on, on the mobile and want to be able to support quality model on the desktop. Yeah, so you can, you can adapt to the circumstance that the user is executing in, which is super nice. Um, and of course, like it's great to see how you've used it here to do both full body uh, animations and also just the head as well. You can have uh, just the hat if you want to. So it's very flexible in that respect, which is really nice. And you've got the multiple export options for GIFs and videos. So very shareable as well. So I'm very excited to see how creatives start to use this kind of thing to make short, short animations or whatever it is they might dream up. I'm super, super interested in that. So the other thing I'd like to ask at this point, of course, is if people watching want to try this out right now, is this live somewhere? Can they go check it out? So um, they can check it out at scribbly.com. Uh, you can access it from both your phone or your laptop. So yeah, it, it should work on mobile. Endeavor. Awesome. So we'll definitely put that in the description after the show. So do go check that out, people back home, and uh, have a play with that. So awesome. Thank you for the demo. And I guess my only question left is, what's next on the radar for this project? Do you have any uh, future plans you can share or how people can maybe get involved potentially? So yeah, we're looking forward to open sourcing uh, this project entirely. So uh, it just takes some time to uh, clean up the code, but we would love to uh, open source it and uh, get more people involved to build more new cool features. Uh, for example, like different uh, export options. Uh, maybe we can support uh, importing a video into the product instead of you know like always recording live, uh, because we thought it would be quite useful for you know uh, for for someone who's trying to create a short YouTube video uh, and they have a recording sitting somewhere already and they might just want to turn it into a short animation to export and audio obviously will be quite important for that um, and yeah at the same time we're also very excited to experiment with uh, the new uh, tensorflow models such as uh, the shiny new uh, face mesh model which apparently supports uh, iris tracking now. yes indeed we just put out a new blog post on this one actually so yes we now have the iris tracking which gives you a lot more resolution around the eye. So when you're squinting or closing the eyelids, you can actually see that in all the surrounding points, which obviously for your characters might actually give a, a more expressive face or this kind of stuff. So I'd love to see that uh, integrated into your product in the future, definitely. That would be super interesting to yeah. see. Definitely, definitely. It's also kind of like a challenge to see how well the algorithm can handle the movements <laughs> <laughs> around the eyes. Yeah, but we think it's super important in, you know, like conveying expression and stuff like that. So yeah, we'll definitely revisit that and maybe even try out the hand pose uh, model in the future. Ooh, a third model in the mix. <laughs> Actually, on that note, I'm wondering, yeah. have you explored, like, if you're going to run so many models in the in the browser, 
Uh, are you exploring ways to run them in parallel? Do you have any advice on that from your current experiences? Yeah, so um, it's definitely on our mind and we're exploring different options. So one thing that we wanted to try out is like right now we can run two uh, models simultaneously, mostly using WebGL backend, but there is a new backend coming out. Uh, well, not exactly new, but like there's optimization coming out on TensorFlow.js side to support SIMD and multi-threading operations on uh, uh, WebAssembly. So that will, mean uh, it might work a lot better if we put one of the model on WebGL and potentially one of the model in WebAssembly uh, and maybe a third model, I don't know, on WebGL as well. <laughs> but uh, that's just <laughs> something we're thinking about exper experimenting. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, what I've found personally uh, to be really powerful is that uh, because we're leaning on um, TensorFlow.js so much, uh, we can really count on the infrastructure improvement on Tensor, uh, TensorFlow .js uh, sorry, TensorFlow .js site without having to do much work ourselves. <laughs> so that we're just really... It gets better with time, like a good wine. So yeah, that's excellent. And I think, yeah, as you said, the SIMD improvements are coming out and then all the models will benefit from that once people start pushing to use um, WebAssembly for those models and so, so on and so forth. So yes, we'd love to see your your experiments in the future to show us the performance differences and things maybe in some follow-up. So thank you so much for being on the Sharing Child today. It's great to see the updates you had for us and look forward to seeing where it goes in the future. Thank you, thank you. And uh, I hope that you check out Scribbly. Uh, just uh, go there, do the round, make a few animation and have fun with the product.